In this video, we'll examine the Italian game through the lens of the world's greatest, Magnus Carlsen. Across six illuminating games, we'll dissect Magnus's creative strategies and piercing tactics. Prepare to be amazed by his brilliant execution and gain deeper insight into the dynamic complexities of the Italian game. The first opponent is the American Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. Magnus starts e4 and after e5, knight f3 attacking the pawn, knight c6 defending, and bishop c4 we enter the Italian game. With this opening choice, white controls the center, attacks the vulnerable f7 square, and prepares to castle. Black plays copycat, moving the bishop to c5 and white castles. Knight f6 attacks the e4 pawn, so d3 defends and opens the bishop. After black's d6, Magnus plays c3, initiating the long-term plan of breaking in the center with d4. h6 prevents what would be an irritating pin on the knight, and white plays rook e1, preparing for the opening of the center. Black castles, and white plays knight b to z7, planning to maneuver the knight to a more active square. a5 expands on the queen side and prevents any b4 ideas by white. White continues their plan of repositioning their knight. Black plays bishop e6, challenging white's powerful bishop. Magnus does not want to capture it because it would give black the open f-file and an extra central pawn which he could use to support a central push. So he decides to move his bishop to b5, undermining black's defense of the d4 square. In light of potential fork opportunities for white, black retreats the knight to e7. At this critical moment, Magnus thrusts forward in the center with d4. Black decides to capture the pawn, giving white the privilege of a powerful central pawn duo. The bishop is attacked, so it retreats to b6, and white plays knight g3, supporting the center. Black cannot sit back. He must challenge white's center, and he does so with d5. Magnus gains a space advantage by playing e5, attacking the knight. Black cleverly plays knight e4 with a deep trap. It looks like white could win a pawn by capturing on e4 twice... But black would have this nice move c5, exploiting the pin on the d-pawn to the queen. If white were to let black capture the pawn, then white wouldn't be able to recapture with the knight because black would have bishop f5, followed by g5, deflecting the rook away from the defense of the knight. Black would ultimately win the piece. The other option is bishop d3 defending the pawn, in which case black would capture the pawn, and after white recaptures, black would play queen d5, hitting just about everything. Queen d3 defends, but then black would take the knight, removing the defender of f5 so that bishop f5 becomes a threat. The queen could not recapture because it would hang the bishop, so white is forced to recapture with the rook, hanging the e5 pawn, and leaving material even for both sides. Back to the game, Magnus plays bishop d3, now threatening to win a pawn for real. Black captures the knight, and white recaptures with the h-pawn. Then black pushes the a-pawn, gaining even more space on the queen side, and white goes after that pawn with bishop c2. So black pushes it again, sacrificing a pawn to damage white's pawn structure, and giving himself the open h-file. Bishop g4 pins the knight to the queen, and signals black's intent to target the weak d4-pawn. Magnus then plays a4, opening up the square for his dark squared bishop. Black plays queen d7, connecting the rooks, before white swoops his bishop to a3, pinning the knight to the rook. Black immediately gets out of the pin. Now that knight could be a pest and go after the d4 pawn, which is already difficult to defend. So white chops it off the board, reducing black's chances for counterplay. After the queen recaptures, white plays queen d3, threatening a checkmate in two. So black plays g6, stopping the attack. Magnus presses on in aggressive style with knight h4 planning a sacrificial attack on the king. Black replies queen b4, threatening the d4 pawn. White completely ignores this, unleashing his attack with knight takes g6. Black should not take back because white would recapture with the queen, forking the king and bishop. White would end up winning two pawns while black's king would be in immense danger. Black instead captures on d4, hitting f2, but also just begging for a queen exchange. Magnus follows with knight e7 check, and again that knight should not be captured because it would lead to a checkmate in 2, with the king blocking the rook's escape square. So black plays king f8, and white captures the d5 pawn with his knight. Now black's best chance is to exchange queens, and although he would be down 2 pawns, he could try to hunt down white's weak pawns in the endgame. 
Instead, he plays the enticing move, which is to capture on f2 with check. This is a big mistake, and we'll start to see the game swing in white's favor. Magnus tucks the king away on h2, where it is remarkably safe behind the barrier of pawns. Black plays rook a to d8, pinning the knight to the queen. Then white plays rook f1, and it becomes clear why black's capture with the queen on f2 was such a big mistake. The f file is semi open, and with the queen on f2, the white rook was able to move there with tempo. Meanwhile, the queen's only safe square is c5, and if she were to move there, white would have a marvelous winning combination. He would capture on f7 with the rook. It would have to be recaptured. Rook f1 check would force the king forward, after which rook f6 check would lure the king into a discovered check once the knight moves to capture the bishop. The final blow would be queen h7 checkmate. Back to the game. Black, unable to move his queen, captures the pawn on e5 with the threat on the knight. White captures the black queen and black gets a knight in return. Now Magnus's queen and rook are under attack and he does not have a way to save both. But he does have one extraordinary move and that is rook takes f7. He was going to lose the rook anyway, but at least it's able to rip open the king's shelter. Black should not even recapture because white would be able to bring the other rook in with check and black would have to be very careful not to get checkmated. Black trying to avoid getting hunted shifts his king to e8. Also, black still has a threat to play rook h5, which would be checkmate. So Magnus captures the rook on d5 with his queen and black recaptures. The result of this chaotic sequence of moves is white being up the exchange. Next, white plays bishop g6, preventing rook h5 and setting up some discovered checks on the king. The king slides over to d8. Rook e1 activates the last piece of the puzzle and c6 is the final mistake. Magnus captures the pawn on b7, attacking the bishop. The bishop retreats to safety on c7. Rook e8 check comes next, forcing the king up to d7. Then, rook h8 is played, and black having had enough, resigns the game. Rook h7 is the threat which would win the bishop. The king could move to d6, but then white would just win another pawn, threatening all sorts of discovered attacks on the king. It's all over for black. The next opponent is known for his acute tactical skill and aggressive style. Daniil Dubov meets the Italian game with knight f6 pressuring the center. Magnus replies with the solid approach, d3 securing his pawn. Black plays h6, preventing any minor piece from getting to g5, and white continues his development with knight c3. Black's bishop b4 pins the knight to the king, so white castles getting out of the pin. Black captures the knight, weakening white's control of d5 and damaging white's pawn structure. Then black castles his king into safety. Magnus drops his bishop back to b3 in anticipation of black's next move, d5, breaking in the center. White's pawn is attacked twice, and there's no great way to defend it. So white captures on d5, inviting black's knight into the center where it attacks the c3 pawn. White ignores the threat, playing h3 to prevent a bishop g4 pin. Black captures the pawn, but this allows queen e1 forking the knight and the pawn. Black's next move is pretty tricky, knight d4. This plans to meet queen takes c3 with knight e2 a royal fork. Magnus does not take the bait, capturing the pawn on e5 with his knight. Then black plays knight c to e2 check, and the king goes to h1. Black plays another stunning sacrifice, bishop takes h3. The idea is that after white recaptures, black has a fork opportunity with the king open to checks. Of course, black has to capture the bishop first, allowing his queen to come to d5 and attacking the rook. Instead of recapturing the b3 knight, Magnus captures the knight on e2 to protect his own knight. He realizes that once black's knight captures the rook, it will probably have a tough time escaping the corner. Black plays queen d5 check, centralizing his queen, and after the king moves, he captures the rook in the corner. Bishop b2 develops and sets his sights on the king. Black replies rook a to e8, pinning the knight to the queen. Magnus shifts his rook to g1, where it can coordinate with the bishop in attacking g7. Black's f6 piles up on the pinned piece, but white has queen g4 escaping the pin and threatening checkmate. Rook e7 to defend would lead to a fork. So black plays the unpleasant g5. White continues queen f5, and this is a critical position for black. 
Capturing the knight with the pawn would dramatically weaken the kingside pawns, allowing white's queen to infiltrate and snatch up all the pawns before checkmating the king on g7 with the rook. Going back, so black's best bet would be to capture the knight with the rook. White wouldn't be able to recapture with the bishop because then black could force a queen exchange and then enter an endgame where he's up three pawns. Going back, so in this position, white's only chance is a draw by perpetual check. Back to the game, black actually plays rook e7, which is a mistake. Magnus's knight leaps to g6 with a fork, and even though his queen is hanging, knight takes e7 would win it back. Black plays queen d6 check, keeping the queens on the board, and white blocks with rook g3. Black captures the pawn on c2, escaping with his knight, before white captures the rook on f8. Black does not even want to recapture the knight because it would allow bishop takes f6 and all sorts of discovered check opportunities for white. Remember, rook f7 would lead to checkmate. So black plays knight d4, bringing the knight back to the action. Magnus just captures it, luring the queen to d4 after it recaptures. Knight e6 attacks the queen, so she goes to e5 offering a queen exchange. White refuses, going to g6 with bigger things in mind. The king is forced to the corner. Queen takes h6 checks again. King g8 and queen f8 it forces black's resignation. The game could continue, but white would force the black king into a mating net, inevitably leading to a beautiful checkmate. The third opponent is once again Hikaru Nakamura, and he meets the Italian game with bishop c5. Magnus castles, and black continues his development with knight f6 pressuring the center. White defends with d3 before black castles. h3 is a solid move, giving the king air and preventing any bishop g4 pins. It's so solid, in fact, that black does the exact same thing. Then c3 prepares a pawn breakthrough in the center. Black plays d6, opening up his bishop, and white plays rook e1, centralizing his rook. Black's a5 aims to prevent any white expansion on the queen side. At this point, Magnus strikes in the center with d4. Black maintains the tension, retreating his bishop to b6. Only after white's bishop e3 does black capture the pawn on d4 with the idea that after white recaptures, he can play d5 and that bishop looks a little silly staring at its own pawn. White captures the d5 pawn and black drops his knight back. He could have recaptured last move, but white's d pawn is isolated, so black would like to have a minor piece on d5 to blockade the pawn before proceeding to attack it. Magnus develops his knight to c3, and black recaptures the pawn, setting up a nice blockade. Now white does not want to exchange off too many pieces, because the weak isolated d pawn would mean that an endgame is better for black. He plays queen d2 with some sneaky ideas that we'll see shortly. Black secures his knight in the center with c6. Now, Magnus launches his bishop like a trebuchet, capturing on h6, and we're not sure if black expected that. Black captures the bishop, and white's queen jumps in, getting awfully close to the naked king. Black only has one move to survive here. It's knight h7. This would prepare to play queen f6, essentially telling the white queen to exchange herself off or get out of here. Instead, black plays bishop f5, and things begin to go awry for him. Magnus lifts his rook to e5 where it hits the bishop so it drops back to b6. Then he swings the rook over lining itself up with the enemy king. Knight h7 finally hits the board but white's attack has already been built up so it's a little late. The rook drops one square to safety. Then black moves his rook out of the way so that the knight can go to f8 to defend the bishop. Magnus sees that the other knight could also retreat to the bishop's defense so he captures it and black recaptures hitting the white bishop. White moves his bishop to d3, piling up on the pinned piece, so black plays knight f8 defending it. Knight e5 continues the constant pressure on that poor bishop. Rook e6 is one last ditch effort to defend, and I suppose Magnus did not have to play the next move, but he did, bishop f5 tickling the rook. It sidesteps the attack before white captures on g6, and black recaptures, and white recaptures, and black recaptures, and white recaptures, and black recaptures before white ultimately recaptures with check. This flurry of exchanges led to a completely changed position. Magnus just won a pawn, so he now has three pawns for the piece, while black's king just had his roof ripped ruthlessly away from him. Black has two options here. 
He could try to escape towards the queen side, in which case white would get his rook to e1 with tempo, allowing it to infiltrate on the next move before forcing the king in line with the queen and pinning and winning the queen. Back to the game. Instead, he goes the other direction, and Magnus patiently checks the king while dropping a rank until the queen ends up on g4. Then the rook comes to e1, about to jump to e6 with the support of their queen. Black, in a final desperate bid, plays rook c8, threatening a back rank check once white's rook moves, but after seeing rook e6 hit the board, black resigns. A check or two would not mean much to white because the plan of playing queen g6 followed by rook e8 winning the queen or checkmate if black were to misstep would be impossible to stop. Black just suffered through an impeccable king hunt by Magnus Carlsen. Daniil Dubov is back for game 4, and in response to the Italian game, he reuses his two knights' defense. Magnus plays d3, keeping things solid, before black plays bishop e7, preparing to castle, and white castles. Black's d3 opens up the bishop, and white plays c3, planning a pawn breakthrough in the center. Black castles, white plays rook e1, activating his rook, and black plays h6, giving the king some air. Magnus plays knight b to d2, initiating a plan to reroute the knight to the king side. Black's bishop e6 challenges white's bishop, and white decides to capture it. Even though this gives black an extra central pawn, white will try to argue that these doubled pawns are more of a liability. White's knight continues its journey, and a5 by black seeks to gain space on the queen side. White continues with knight g3 supporting his center, and black plays a4 gaining more ground on the queen side. Magnus develops his final minor piece before black thrusts forward in the center with d5. White could capture, opening up an attack on the e5 pawn, but black would recapture with the queen, putting her on an active square and defending the pawn. Instead, he maintains the tension, playing b4. That pawn cannot be allowed to get to b5, where it would remove the defender of the e5 pawn. So black captures en passant. White recaptures, opening up the rooks to one another, leading to a rook exchange and the queen taking the a-file. Then black pushes forward in the center with d4. Magnus plays queen b3, in anticipation of black's capture on c3 so that his d3 pawn is defended. Black captures, opening the queen's eyes to the backward d3 pawn, and white captures the c3 pawn, adding an attacker to the isolated d5 pawn. Then black plays bishop c5, setting up some tactics. If white were to take the pawn on e5, then the bishop would end up on e5, and black could sacrifice his bishop on f2, luring the king to f2, and then play knight g4 with a fork on the king and the bishop. Magnus doesn't take the bait, calmly playing b4 to attack the bishop. It retreats, and white presses on with b5 hitting the knight. It jumps to d4. Now white could take the e5 pawn, but it might give black some tactics on the f2 square. So he doesn't take the risk, capturing the knight. And black could undouble his pawns, but it would block his bishop. So he captures with the bishop, keeping it active. Magnus lifts the queen to b3, where it attacks the hanging e6 pawn. Queen d7 defends it. Then white takes advantage of the pin on the pawn to the king, playing knight f5, attacking the bishop. The bishop cannot move without hanging the e5 pawn, so black plays knight g4 to defend the pawn. White captures the bishop, and black recaptures with the pawn. Magnus plays e5, taking the f6 square away from the knight and threatening to play h3, which would trap the knight. Black's only hope is to play h5, creating a retreat square. Then white plays queen c4, attacking the pawn for a second time. Now black could defend it, but he would enter a passive position and white's rook c1 is coming with an unstoppable attack on the c7 pawn. Black, knowing he would lose a pawn, tries to stir chaos in the position with an exchange sacrifice on f3. White's recapture attacks the knight, so it retreats, but the white king is now vulnerable to attack. Magnus shifts his rook to c1 with an attack on the c7 pawn, and there's no way to defend it. Black settles for knight f5, planning knight h5 to attack the kingside pawns before white wins the pawn. Queen d5 attacks f3. White retreats the queen so it could come to the king's defense, and black plays knight h4, adding an attacker to f3. White, of course, cannot move the pawn because of checkmate. He plays queen e2 with an idea that we'll see shortly. Black captures the pawn with check. King f1 would hang the h pawn, so Magnus moves the king to h1. But this allows knight takes e5 with the discovered check. 
Now we see that white's queen on e2 supports f3 blocking the check. White's up a rook for a knight, so black capturing with the queen would lead to a winning endgame for white. Similarly, capturing with the knight would allow queen e4 forcing a queen exchange too. Black captures the b5 pawn instead, while also adding an attacker to d3. Magnus plays rook e1 creating a battery towards the knight and the pawn behind it. The knight captures on d3 self-pinning, and white lands the knockout blow, rook d1. Black resigns because the knight has no way to move without leaving the queen hanging. White will capture the knight on the next turn, giving him a decisive material advantage. The second to last opponent is once again Hikaru Nakamura, and he once again meets the Italian game with bishop c5. White castles, black plays knight f6 pressuring the center, white plays d3 defending, black castles, and white plays h3. Then black launches d5, setting the stage for a more open game. Magnus captures the pawn, and after black recaptures, he plays a4 expanding on the queen side. Black's bishop e6 developing is met by knight g5 chasing the bishop. It moves to f5, after which white can activate his queen with tempo. The knight drops back to defend the bishop before white plays c3, stopping any knight advances and also preparing for a queenside expansion. Black's h6 kicks the knight, so it goes to e5, attacking the bishop. Black's bishop moves to e6. Magnus plays b4, gaining more space on the queenside. Black tries to stop further expansion with a6, taking advantage of white's lag in development and the pin on the rook. So white begins developing the rest of his pieces, starting with knight b to d2. Black plays king h8, preparing to move the f-pawn by getting out of the pin. Then white plays bishop a3, signaling that b5 is about to come. Black drops his bishop back, paving the way for his f-pawn, and white captures the bishop on e6. Black cannot recapture with the queen because b5 would win a piece. So he recaptures with the pawn. Magnus strikes with b5, attacking the knight and opening the bishop's gaze on the weak d6 pawn. The knight hops to a5, and an attack on the b7 pawn by the white queen has been opened, but luckily the knight defends it. Seeing this, white plays bishop b4, trying to remove the defender of the b7 pawn. White must play b6 without hanging the a6 pawn, so first he exchanges the a6 pawn off, and after white recaptures, then he plays b6, saving the pawn. Magnus plays bishop d5, attacking the rook, and blockading the weak d6 pawn. Now black could capture the bishop, but it would not accomplish much, so he saves his rook instead. White fastens his bishop into place with c4. Black launches forth f5, but this allows the bishop to step right into e6 with an attack on the rook. The rook moves to b8. Next, Magnus captures the knight, luring the pawn to a5 where it's easier to attack. White continues with d4, making way for the queen to come and attack the a5 pawn. He also understands that if black were to capture, he could easily win back the pawn and have a semi-open d-file to attack the other weak d-pawn. Black goes for rook f6 attacking the bishop. White pushes d5 defending it. Now that bishop in black's camp is getting a little irritating, which is probably why black plays bishop f7 to challenge it. Magnus captures the bishop, and after black recaptures, he plays knight b3, attacking the pawn on a5. Black defends with rook a8. Then we see the other idea behind knight b3, which was to support c5. If black captures the pawn, then white would have a great position after d6, and then knight takes c5. White's pawns would get rolling, while black's rook is tied down to the defense of a5, and the queen is tied down to the defense of the rook. Instead, black plays a4, attacking the knight, and Magnus doesn't even save it. He plays c6, sacrificing a piece. Were black to capture the knight, white would exchange rooks in the corner, capture on b3, and then claim that his two passed pawns are decisive. And although there would still be a lot to play for here, what would most likely happen is white's pawns would get rolling, forcing black's pieces into a very awkward position, eventually white's queen will infiltrate, and inevitably lead to a win of material. Back to the game, black plays queen b6 attacking the b5 pawn. This also means there's now a pin on the a pawn to the undefended rook. So Magnus is allowed to bring his queen to d3 to defend the pawn. Black moves the rook, adding an attacker, but in doing so hangs the a pawn. 
Now black shouldn't even take the b-pawn because white would play c7 and the rook stuck defending the queen would have to leave the back rank, allowing white to soon promote. In light of this, black plays knight g6 so that the rook can stop c7. With no more tactics, black defends the b-pawn with rook b4 before black's knight leaps to f4 attacking the queen. Now white plays a fantastic move. He sacrifices the exchange with rook takes f4. Black recaptures with the pawn, giving away defense of the d4 square, allowing the knight to hop in and defend the pawn. With things simplifying more and more, white's connected past pawns are becoming even stronger. Black, in a desperate bid for counterplay, plays f3. Magnus just ignores this, playing rook c1, setting the stage for the white pawn's coronation. Black plays rook a7 with one last trick up his sleeve. After white plays knight e6, making c7 unstoppable, black tries rook a2 with the threat of checkmate. Magnus finds the cleanest way to convert the game with queen d4, attacking the queen and threatening checkmate on g7. Black resigns. Black would be forced to exchange queens, at which point white's pawns would be too difficult to stop, and black would eventually have to give up the rook for the pawn and be down a decisive amount of material. The final opponent is Etienne Becquerel, and he meets the Italian game with bishop c5. Magnus immediately plays c3 controlling the d4 square, and black plays knight f6 attacking the center. White defends with d3, black castles, and white drops the bishop back in anticipation of black's next move, d5. Black plays queen e2 in order to defend his pawn and maintain the tension. Black replies rook e8, lining up the rook with the queen and king. Magnus plays bishop g5, pinning the knight to the queen, and now the threat is to take the pawn on d5 with the bishop. To meet the threat, black captures the pawn on e4, releasing the tension, and white recaptures. Then h6 is played, giving the king air and kicking the bishop back to h4. Black ultimately decides that this pin is too inconvenient and breaks it with bishop e7. White develops his last minor piece before black plays knight h5, offering a bishop exchange. Magnus declines, retreating his bishop to g3, where it adds an attacker to the e5 pawn. Black tucks his bishop away, opening up his rook to defend the pawn. Finally, white castles, going long so that his rook is simultaneously brought to an open file in line with the enemy queen. The queen gets out of harm's way, moving to f6. Magnus's knight c4 builds up pressure on the e5 pawn. Black replies knight f4, attacking the white queen, prompting white to chop the knight off the board. Black recaptures with the queen, giving check, so the king shifts over to b1. Then black plays bishop g4, pinning the knight to the queen. White immediately plays h3, forcing the bishop to make a decision, and it captures the knight. White recaptures with the pawn, suffering a damaged pawn structure. After black's bishop c5, white is able to lift the rook to d5, attacking the bishop and preparing to double rooks on the d-file. Bishop b6 retreating is followed by a4, threatening to trap the bishop with a5. Black stops the threat by challenging the rook and trying to remove a defender of a5 so that a5 can be stopped. White simply doubles his rooks. Black captures the rook and white recaptures with the pawn, attacking the knight so it retreats to e7. Then Magnus unfurls d6, a potent move, attacking the knight and threatening to play a5 and capture the pawn on c7 once the bishop moves. Black is forced to capture the pawn, resulting in knight takes d6, hitting the rook, attacking f7 twice, and hitting b7. Black's only choice is rook f8, defending the more important pawn. So white wins a pawn on b7. Black goes for queen f5, forking the king and the pawn on a6. After the king moves, he wins back the pawn. The e5 pawn is left hanging, however, so Magnus picks that one up while attacking the knight. The knight goes to g6, counterattacking, and the queen moves to e4, threatening the knight because the f7 pawn is pinned to the king. Now black's best bet here is king h7 because it's important he gets out of the pin on the f7 pawn. Instead, black plays knight h4, targeting the pawn on f3, but this is a fatal mistake. Magnus plays knight d6, hitting the f7 pawn twice, and with the pin still in effect, the black pawn cannot move, nor can it be defended. Black captures the pawn on f2, thinking that all will be okay after white takes on f7, since he can just recapture and get two pieces for the rook. Little did he know that white's next move, rook d8, is checkmate. With the queen covering h7 and the rook in a nasty pin, the king is trapped with nowhere to go. 
I hope these games were both entertaining and instructive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more chess content.